So, Mark, UFOs have arrived in Las Vegas. Some body cam footage from a police officer was released showing this unidentified object landing in somebody's yard. They called 911, said an eight-foot person, kind of like looking with alien big eyes, all that landed and scared the police officers. <laughs> what the heck is happening? There's no news. I mean, there's no follow-up to this, like pictures of the yard or, or anything else. It's just like all kinds of crazy, like uh, Independence Day, the movie is coming to real life. But it was probably just like a weather balloon from China or something that, that popped and fell down. Who knows? You know, like area, what is it? Area 51 and all that. So is this even new to Vegas? I feel like there's always UFOs somewhere there. Yeah, there has been a lot more discussion from the government saying that they haven't found objects, but some people think it's a conspiracy. It's just funny because on the body cam, the officer says, I'm so nervous right now because another officer had seen this object. But it, I just find it curious that there's no like pictures of the yard or anything else released about this. And they closed the case already. So we'll never know. <laughs> so good news downtown, Mark. Binion's has brought back their million dollar display in a new area. Looks like they gussied up the walls, made it look nice put the million dollars on display. This is such a historical display, everybody going there to, to do it. I know you had a chance to do it before they closed it a few years ago. And I was always curious as to why they took it out. So glad to see it back. Yeah, maybe they just needed new bills and they were like <laughs> wearing down or something. I don't know. But I guess they haven't heard of inflation. It should be $1.6 million if you want what it was worth back when they took it away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe they can't uh, afford it. I always wondered, like, is that why they took it out? Because it was like, oh, we can't really float this million dollars here. Because it was, you know, especially Binion's, as it's changed so much over the years, you know, it used to be the happening place downtown. Even when I was a kid, you know, in the late 90s, early 2000s, it was just a busy kind of happening place with all the history and the, the family history there and everything. And I feel like the last 10 years, it's turned into something else, just a, a lower tier property. But that always drew people off of Fremont Street. So I, I think somebody finally came to their senses by putting this thing back. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely something that people on Fremont Street, if you know about it, you go check it out and then get you in the door and maybe you throw some money in a slot machine, maybe you buy a drink. So I think it's good, you know, a million dollars. Yeah. But when you're running a casino, a million dollars shouldn't be a huge thing. You would hope, but you never know these days. Things are weird. Yeah. Yeah. You would, uh, you would certainly hope that they could uh, afford to put it there and have it insured and all that. So yeah, check it out downtown next time you guys are there. And then Plaza opened all their stuff already. The pink box donuts, all that stuff. So some new stuff to check out downtown. If you go there, you just don't go after dark. Don't go after dark. Yeah. There might be fights. Yeah. <laughs> lots of fights. Now, what you might not want to do and go is swim in Lake Mead. Uh, a story came out this week that a water pumping station leaked 850,000 gallons of sewage, of which 57,500 made it into uh, Duck Creek Wash, which goes into Lake Mead. It took them two days to figure out that this leak existed. A lot of people probably don't know that pretty much all of our drinking water is uh, recycled many times, and that we filter it all out. That's part of the water saving measures before it goes back into Lake Mead. So only 57,500 gallons, Mark, made it into Lake. That's, you know, that's got to be... That's only like 40,000 poops. <laughs> the health district did say, or the water authority did say, yeah, it's they did. environmental impact. <laughs> yeah. You'll just notice greenery and new trees growing along the banks uh, as this uh, comes out. But no, I mean, you just made me realize that I need to buy bottled water every time I go to Vegas from now on. It's, 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 it's all recycled. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. I know it's safe, they say. But it's funny that they say this has no environmental impact. I, I'm not going swimming in Lake Mead with the bodies and now floating pee pee and poo poo. No, thanks. To be fair, there's a lot of water in Lake Mead. So, you know, I think it would take so, a lot of... Yeah. Don't go I mean, by the entry area. Don't swim there. <laughs> it's never been particularly clean. I used to swim in there when I was a kid. I haven't been swimming there in a long time, but uh, I had a family member who would not go in there. Should we talk about your third nipple now? <laughs> yeah. Everybody uh, who grew up in Las Vegas swimming in Lake Mead has a third nipple. It's just uh, it's just part of part of life here. All right. Yeah, this is crazy. I mean, and and this is something that they've said has happened before, and the fact that nobody caught it for several days. I don't I don't understand how that's a thing. Like this is wastewater. It's disgusting, and, and you don't have better controls on it. I, I feel like that's a big problem and something they definitely need to look into. Yeah, I think they are replacing this pumping station. Construction is supposed to start next year, so uh, hopefully they'll have new tech to figure out leaks. This did happen in, in 2020 also, I think. So uh, we all survived, though. We all survived, Mark. So 
So we'll just uh, we'll just keep doing that. So uh, a new hotel is getting built just off the strip. In fact, it's like a block from Allegiant Stadium inside the stadium district. It's going to be called Nuance Hotel. Uh, the developers said about two hundred seventy-five million dollars will be spent. The hotel will be nineteen stories tall, three hundred and forty rooms. It's going to have like a base level, then several levels of parking, and then the rooms I think will start on the tenth floor. So yeah, this is a uh, more development kind of being brought by the stadium. I don't think this would exist if the stadium wasn't there. Yeah, I definitely think it's for the stadium. I just wonder, like, how how viable is this? You know, it would make a lot of sense in a different city where they don't have a lot of hotels somewhat near a stadium to have this and for ease of use like if you're going for a game you want to stay by the stadium so you can quickly go home or go back to your room or whatever but in vegas it's different like you're if you're going to a game you're also going there to go to vegas i feel like so you're going to want to go to the strip or or whatever so i don't know what what's going to be the big driver here especially when there's not games or concerts or events there you know will people want to stay there maybe they want to get off the strip a bit and it's it's an option there before they go to the airport or something ease of access in and out but i don't know do you think it'll be full i mean it's only uh, what 340 rooms so it's not huge there's a lot of events at allegiant too in top on top of the football games and you know the bridge is right there to walk over to mandalay bay so it's about a 10 minute walk i guess to get to a casino so it's not you know too bad there i mean it doesn't really it's a very industrial area so this is going to stand very much over everything else in the area and I wonder over time if we'll start to see full redevelopment with more of these types of projects in that area, because it will stand out. But uh, just they had some very minor zone variances, like the number of parking spots and stuff like that. But for the most part, the county approved this and uh, it's good to go. Yeah, I wonder if they're just kind of taking a gamble, thinking that this area will be redeveloped over time and they're getting in early when it's cheaper and they can get it done. So if that ends up happening, it's going to look genius and they're going to make a lot of money. And if it doesn't, they're they're going to be, you know, hoping that they have a concert every day. So other construction updates. When I heard about this hotel, I looked up the Dream Hotel, which stalled construction, I think about two, two and a half months ago now. And they said it was only going to be for a couple of weeks. There's absolutely no news about anything related to the Dream Hotel since then. So I believe construction still halted. They haven't announced anything else. So that property probably in some sort of uh, legal standstill right now with contractors suing. And that's just uh, speculation. But that's why they were shut down is because they stopped paying their bills. So no uh, no new update on that. MSG Sphere was in the news for a couple lawsuits from contractors. Uh, one was like 3.3 million. Another one was just over 3 million, basically saying that these are from 2020 and 2021. So I don't think this really affects today's stuff. These are kind of disputes between the Sphere and those contractors uh, because they've already spent $2 billion and paid that out for construction. But what was interesting in the one of the lawsuits saying that the Sphere is supposed to have the longest bar in the world and then they changed the design, and that's one of the reasons that they decided not to pay this contractor. It would have been kind of cool to see the longest bar in the world. I wonder what that measurement is. You know, it sounds like they built it, too. And then he's like, nah, you know what? Rip it out or whatever. So that that that's stolen for you, like making crazy decisions. If you already built it, just like leave it. Why would you spend money ripping it out? But yeah, it would have been awesome. They could have sold lots of popcorn and ICs for the biggest movie theater in the world. <laughs> there you go. The biggest movie theater in the world. <laughs> with the longest bar, such a missed opportunity to think that they just put in screens and thought that that was going to be enough. If they had the longest bar, they could have just opened up the bar to people. And I think people would have come in even when they didn't have something going on. And I think that would have been an opportunity to get people in the door, check it out. Even if you charged like a cover fee or something, I would have gone for the longest bar in the world. That would be a reason to draw me in. So I do think it's a missed opportunity a bit. I just wonder how long it had to be and how much space it had to take up just to, to get that. That's probably why they... Longer than yeah. Circa. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's long. So uh, the A's are in the news. We hadn't talked about them for a couple of shows but the legislative session ended, and then the governor called a special session for some budget stuff, and then he called a special session to hear about the A's stuff. So they're still debating this, but there is a lot of pushback from state lawmakers on both sides, actually, Democrats and Republicans. Basically, some are upset because the governor vetoed a lot of like social initiatives and saying, well, if you're, we're not funding these things, why should we pay for the stadium? But of course, MGM Resorts came out for it. The Culinary Union is for it. A lot of other organizations, I think the Chamber of Commerce as well. So there's a big battle happening up there in Carson City as time runs out. We'll see if they vote on it. 
or if they send the A's packing. In the meantime, Oakland is saying, we want the A's back. We're ready to go back to the table. So I, w- wouldn't that be crazy if this all ends with the A's oh staying in Oakland? Yeah. It, like, come on, people. Just make up your mind and let's get this thing done. This is this is nuts. Like, I feel like it's not going to quite full. Well, I'm hoping that it doesn't quite work out and they have to play in a minor league stadium for a year to shame them because I think it would be hilarious. And then they end up going back to Oakland, which I think would also be pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, seeing some of this, it's it kind of blew my mind that they they put the stadium into authority. They build it and then they put it into like an authority owned by the city or owned by the, you know, the, the public. And then you're like, what? Well, that doesn't make sense. You just spent hundreds of millions of dollars, a billion dollars building this stadium. And this is what a lot of pro teams do. And then they lease it back for a dollar. And then when they're like, hey, you know what? We're out of here. We're going to move. We're going to build a new stadium over here. They leave the city holding the bag. And cities are not equipped. You know, we've seen it in Detroit with the Tigers and with the Lions. They're not equipped to make good decisions when they're stuck with a stadium. You know, around here, they turned down a decent offer thinking it was worth more. They ended up spending millions of dollars upkeeping it for years and then selling like the Silverdome sold for like $400,000. Somebody came in and just stripped it, sold it for parts and then knocked it down. So this is, you know, all in the favor of the owners once again. Yeah, of course. And they're the ones who have kind of shoved this down people's throats. I think it's a great idea for the A's to come. I've already said on the show that I don't really support the public financing. A lot of this is through tax rebates. So people will argue and say that it's money generated from the stadium. That's part of that's coming back in that way. So it's not just the state handing out money. And that's true. But as you said, the way this is going to work is that gaming and leisure properties who owns the land will transfer nine acres to the athletics as soon as it's completed. And then the athletics will turn around and give the stadium and the the land to the government. And then from there, you know, they'll own it and it'll be a lease back and all of that. So uh, there's still a lot to be hashed out. I would still say my gut is they're going to pass this thing in some form because they're, you know, all the big players now in the state are behind it. Uh, and MGM, of course, they're behind it, man. Their casinos are right there on every side of that. Wouldn't you just love to have a, a stadium there? Caesars. Yeah, they should pay the three hundred million. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is like <laughs> delivering people right to your door. Yeah, why wouldn't the government go to them and say, you know what, you want this? You pony up half the money. You know, I, I, it would still make sense for MGM. I think. I think they'd get that money back from people going to the game and and being in that area. Cause that's kind of like a forgotten corner a bit, you know, MGM still pretty busy, but like New York, New York, Luxor, they don't get the the type of foot traffic they used to back in the day. What's interesting too. And I just thought of this is if we do get the stadium there, do we see Excalibur or Luxor probably Excalibur go away uh, just for a brand new casino developed right across from the stadium. This might be the thing that causes MGM to finally, you know, take up on those rumors of redeveloping uh, Excalibur. Not the dirty castle. Don't take away yeah. our dirty castle. <laughs> yeah, no, no dirty castle. Uh, shout out to C Note on uh, on Twitter. So, last thing, and this is like crazy. All this government money, right? Uh, Formula One. They've been doing all that crazy construction, tearing up all the streets. It's about eighty million dollars worth of work that's being done on the roads, and it wasn't ever clear who was going to pay for that. But Liberty Media, their parent company, has been paying for it. And just this week, or in recent weeks, they came to the county and said, "Hey, we want you to pay forty million dollars of this eighty million dollars." The Clark County Commission voted four to three to go to the negotiating table, which I think they should have just said no, uh, because this has just been uh, been. I mean, I know the race is going to bring a lot of stuff. I'm excited for the race, but it's been really hard for people who have to deal with the strip. It's been really hard for tourists because this is months and months and months of big closures on the strip. And then for them to come this late in the game and say, hey, pay for half of it. It seems like a bad look. Yeah, $40 million. What's that, like 10 tickets for them to sell? I mean, it's crazy, you know, and this is something that should have been negotiated up front. And I understand they're improving certain things. They're putting down new pavement and all that, but... They're going to make tons of money off of this. And it's not like they're repaving a whole street and they could say, you know what? This is helping your city. Why don't you throw in half the money? It's still a deal for you. Like they're repaving sections of it, you know, going in and out. And it's not going to be really helpful. It's it's causing way more problems than it's helping the city. So I would have said no. I, I'm surprised they're even going to the table. 
Yeah, I mean, why didn't they deal with this before construction started? Uh, but uh, yeah, it's caused a lot of hassle. And this is going to stretch on through basically September. I mean, they're doing the heavy repaving, I think, through next month. And then they're going to go back and do a full repaving of the entire route in September ahead of the race. So uh, this is months and months of you know disruptions for the strip casinos, for everything else. They keep saying, and they reiterated it with this story in the media, that it's going to bring a billion dollars of economic impact to Southern Nevada. So that's their talking point, saying it's all worth it, saying that the people of Southern Nevada will get to enjoy all this repaving after it's done, which I suppose is true, right? I mean, at some point, they're not going to have to pay. The taxpayers are not going to have to pay for the repaving that, that they did. But yeah, it's just weird. Did they just see that everybody else, Hollywood, the A's were coming for money and they're like, yeah, let's let's give it a shot. Isn't that all business? Like any big business just is looking for handouts all the time and, and the government usually does it. So why wouldn't you ask, I guess? Yeah, so <laughs> let us know what you guys talk. It's so much of these government bills. Thankfully, the legislature is now dismissed. They are in special session for the A's. But all of these crazy issues that we've been talking about will be settled one way or the other. Either they'll be voted down or not voted on at all. Or, you know, the Hollywood bill, I think, is actually dead. I haven't heard anything about that coming back in a special session, so it didn't pass. So uh, it's been really crazy because Nevada has, uh, in the Constitution, they don't have full-time state representatives. So the, these are, the whole idea was to bring normal citizens when they created the state. And so they have a very limited session that they meet every couple of years. And that allows the people to be just normal people who have normal jobs who represent, you know, government up in the up in the capital. So it works a little different than other states, which, you know, you always get these crunches and these uh, special sessions and all of that. But it's uh, it's an interesting thing to watch. So let us know what you guys think. Should the county pay F1? Should they pass the A's bill? What about that new hotel near swimming? Allegiant Stadium? Are you swimming in Lake Mead for $10,000? Would yeah, you drink you a have, cup of water out of it? <laughs> do you have a third nipple? Let us know in the comments. We do two shows a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. And we'll be back in just a couple days with a new show. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. Have a good weekend, everybody.